back with Rodney assistant coach for Shelby Valley High School. And Rodney, you're going for that district tournament again up here, try to make it two years in a row against a powerful Pineville team. They're playing some good ball right now. What can we probably look for tonight's championship game? You know, this is what it's all about, Bill. Um, both teams, I think, are playing very well. I was very impressed with Pike for the night, the way they moved the basketball. They moved it extremely well. They played excellent defense. I think uh, Pike was probably playing their best basketball of the season. I just hope we can play with them tonight. Okay, you all have split a pair this year, 1-1. One, one, uh, they beat you down there. You all lit, uh, got out to an early lead down at but they came back on you, defeated you, I think, something like probably 9 or 10 points down here. But then you all got back at them up here, I think, beat them by 6 or 7. Uh, any changes or uh, any different uh, thoughts in strategy as far as tonight's game go compared to those games a little bit earlier? No, Bill. I think you'll see basically the same type of ball. Uh, both teams get it up and down the floor. Pike was going to put a lot of pressure on us. Uh, we're going to, in return, try to put a lot of pressure on them. I don't see each coach, uh, Coach Osborne or Coach Waller, might throw some little wrinkle in somewhere, but you'll basically see the same type of ball game. Rodney, can we look for a fast transaction game probably here or look for a slow down and try to uh, set the pace a little bit here in the early going? No, Bill. You'll see you'll see that ball up and down that floor a lot quick. And, uh, you know, that's like I said, Bill, that's when they're at their best when they run the ball, and we're definitely at their best when we run the ball. So I think the fans on both sides really enjoy tonight's action. If it's uh, anything like uh, the pre previous games coming in here, there's, that scoreboard's going to light up because uh, Pipe will beat Mullers, I believe, 97 to 57, and then you all beat uh, Millard 90 uh, to uh, 60, I believe. Uh, so, uh, but we're looking for a much better game tonight as uh, two of the uh, top teams in this region going at it. And uh, while we're talking about it, we've got to give congratulations to the Shelby Valley uh, Wildcat Lady Cats up here. Yes, they, they've had an excellent season. Coach Spears does a fantastic job with these girls. Uh, I think a lot of people ain't gave them the respect they needed. To me, there's good as they made in this region, and uh, I think uh, people's gonna be surprised. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Rodney. I know you're wanting to get back to your team, and I'll tell you what, best of luck to you in tonight's tournament and going into the region. Thank you. Okay, uh, Coach uh, Rodney Rowe and uh, Dr. Dom, let's just keep it right here and uh, see if we can get a chance to talk to uh, Pikeville coach, Herd Wallen. Herd, can we talk to you? Okay, get Dave Thomas, Dave. We're going to try to get a chance to talk with uh, David Thomas, one of the assistant coaches for uh, Pikeville. So you're watching uh, 59th District Tournament Action from WPRG and TV5, and uh, Dave Thomas, one of the assistant coaches of Pikeville. Uh, Dave, you've split a pair with this Shelby Valley Wildcat team earlier this year. You all won down there at Pikeville, and then you come up here, they defeated you. Uh, any different, what's your thoughts on strategy? Any different changes going into tonight's championship game compared to those uh, two games earlier in the season? I don't think you'll see a whole lot of difference other than both teams have improved uh, quite a bit, and uh, Shelby Valley's playing real well right now, and uh, you know we've won like 11 out of 15 or 12 out of uh, 15 games. So uh, you're going to see two teams, two, two good rivals, get after it, and uh, it's going to be a good basketball game. It, it always has been a good rivalry, as these teams are pretty well evenly matched, I think. And uh, can we look for a lot of points to be put on the scoreboard? I look for that scoreboard to be lit, to be lit up tonight, Dave. Just to be quite honest with you. I think uh, you'll see a lot of points. Uh, they got some shooters. We got a. We got a big kid, of course, Garvin inside, and we got some kids that can score, and we'll score a lot of points off our defense, hopefully. And, uh, you know, they get after it defensively, so you're going to see up and down, and, uh, yeah, you're going to see the lights on the scoreboard, I think. Okay, uh, and uh, we'd like to uh, say uh, congratulations, of course, to the Pikeville Lady uh, Panthers. They're, they're the uh, runners-up in the 59th district this year, and uh, they did a good job up here, no doubt about it. And the th important thing, you know, they got here, and... Uh, had a lot of ups and downs, some injuries, a couple quit, and uh, Coach Brady's worked hard with those girls, and uh, they did get there, and they're going to the regional tournament. That's important. Dave, let's look at some of the key matchups tonight as you see them. Uh, of course, you played this team earlier twice in the year. What are some of the key matchups as you see them going into tonight's championship game? Well, I, you know, I think the, they're going to have to contain Garvin. Garvin and Keyes is always a good matchup. Keyes is a strong player inside who can post. Murray a little bit quicker around the basket, so I think you'll see that be a good matchup. That's important. And, of course, we'll have to contain Johnson to some extent. Great shooter. Got some great moves. And then uh, they've got some uh, other kids uh, that's been uh, sticking the ball in the basket. So we'll have to guard all of them. I think defense, whoever establishes himself defensively, I think both teams will play man-to-man, -man, uh, will win the basketball game. Okay, I, I know that Garvin's uh, tough in there. He's, he's a tough, tough player to play one-on-one, -on -one, no doubt about that. 
uh, again, uh, I'd like to wish the uh, Pipe High School girls uh, congratulations on a, a good, real good effort up here. And Dave, best of luck to you in tournament. Right. And uh, going also into the region, no matter who wins tonight. All right. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Dave. All right, uh, Dave Thomas, one of the assistant coaches uh, here at the uh, Pikeville uh, Panthers, Dr. Don. So we're going to take a break for these commercial messages. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. Bill Bevins back to TV5 Sports and WPRG. We're at the Virgie Athletic Center getting ready for the boys. Championship game of the 59th District Tournament. First, the Shelby Valley Wildcats taking on the Pikeville Panthers. Of course, Shelby Valley coached by uh, Bobby Osborne down there and uh, Pikeville Panthers coached by uh, Herb Wallen. We got a chance to talk to a couple of the assistants while ago. Uh, Rodney Rowe, the assistant coach for Shelby Valley. And of course, David Thomas, uh, one of the assistant coaches for the uh, Pikeville Panthers. And uh, Dr. Don, this place is jam-packed up here. Exciting high school basketball action at its finest in the mountains. Sure is, Bill. This is mayhem up here, huh? Basketball. This is on to the region from here on out. And of course, we got that Belfry and the El Fort City game over there tonight, too, in John Street. Over there at the 60th District, and I'll tell you what, you talking about standing room only, you won't you won't be able to shake them with a stick over here, and uh, that's about the same way up here, of course, in the uh, 60th. It is uh, uh, Elkhorn uh, taking on Belfry, and uh, that team's going, been going at it all year. Let's give our listeners out there in TV5 listening area a little bit of rundown about the uh, the other districts down there in the uh, 57th tonight it's the uh, Sheldon Clark Cardinals taking on the uh, Paintsville Tigers of course uh, Paintsville coached by Bill Mike Runyon taking on Roger Harless's uh, Cardinals this year and uh, that's two of the uh, top teams in, in the region of course both teams will be advancing on but they're playing for the championship down there at the 57 tonight now over in the uh, 58 to give you a little bit of rundown of what's happening in the 58 it was the Betsy Lane Bobcats coming in there I believe the number five seed knocking off the number one seed, the Will Wright Fighting Trojans, coached by Jackie Pack over there, and they've had an excellent season. And uh, Betsy Lane beat them, I believe, uh, 66 to 62 by four points out there. And uh, tonight, it's uh, Prestonburg taking on Allen Central. Of course, uh, they will be taking on, I believe, uh, Betsy Lane in the uh, championship game down there. But right now, we're at the 59th District. We're at Shelby Valley dressed in blue with the white letters taking on the Pikeville Panthers. And uh, we're expecting a good one. So we're just about ready for the opening tip from the Burgey Athletic Center. And it's mayhem up here right now. And of course, uh, if you're just tuning in late to us in the girls' championship game, it was Shelby Valley High School uh, Lady Cats defeating the uh, Lady Panthers from Pikeville by a score of 81 to 50. And uh, of course, uh, Selena Bentley, uh, the uh, senior, had six, six three-pointers in the first half. And uh, what a uh, phenomenal night of shooting that Selena Bentley had in the first half. Of course, uh, Brandy Baker, she got a lot of playing time. She's just an eighth grader, and uh, now I'm joined by uh, Kent Carter, who uh, did the uh, color commentary in the girls' game with Ivor Branham. And, uh, Kent, I was just uh, commenting on the girls' uh, game a little bit. I was watching you all down the hospitality room, and Selena Bentley come out on fire, hit six three-pointers in the first Selena half. was something. Brandy Baker is a rebounding machine. Ivor Branham's trying to get our attention down there. Uh, let's throw it to Ivor and see what it is he wants to say. Uh, Ivor, go ahead. Guys, guys, I'll tell you what, this place is just jam-packed down here. You can't, I can't even hear myself think. Of course, I don't think very much anyhow, so that doesn't matter. Lucky. We have but uh, this you. place is just jam-packed. 
This crowd is ready for a game, and just in a minute, we're going to be hearing Ed Dolphy Robinson begin announcing these starting lineups, and it should be a real dandy. we got NC Casey, one of the tops in the game, calling this game out here tonight. And uh, guys, I'm going to be trying to move around as the game goes on, so y'all try to keep an eye on me. It's not telling where you may find me. I may be anywhere. All right, our old buddy Ivor Bannon, man. Uh, they're rocking and rolling up here at the Virtue Athletic Center, Kent. Isn't that something? Man, this is what it's all about. This is why kids get out and get into this stuff. Right here, you're looking at it. Exactly. And uh, we're getting, should be getting ready for the uh, starting lineups, and we'll listen to Ed Donnelly Robinson. All right, Ed Donnelly Robinson for the introduction. District tournament between the Michael High School Panthers and the Wildcats of Shelby Valley High School. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the visiting team on the scoreboard, the Wildcats of Shelby Valley High School. Starting at guard, a 5'10 senior, number 20, Rodney Kaiser. Starting at guard, a 6'5 junior, number 15, Jeremy Johnson. Starting at center, a 6'5 junior, number 40, Bobby Key. Starting at forward, a 6'2 senior, number 14, Chad Justice. And starting at forward, a 5'9 junior, number 24, Jamie Roberts. The Wildcats are coached by Bobby Aldrin, assisted by Rodney Roll and Greg Napier. And now for the home team on the scoreboard, the Pikeville High School Panthers. Boy, look at him go. Starting a guard, a six-foot senior, number 11, Keith Lockhart. Starting a guard, a six-foot senior, number 32, Kevin Lockhart. Starting at the center position, a six-four senior, number 20, Murray Garvin. At forward, a 6'3", junior, number 34, J.P. Blair. And at forward, a 5'11", junior, number 24, Tyrone Mullen. Guys, it's tournament action. Let's get it on. Thank you, Ira. Appreciate it. Bill, I, I'm I'm fired up myself. I got goosebumps. This is so exciting. Kent, you'd think this is the championship of the state tournament instead of the district tournament. And no uh, doubt about for it. the folks up here, it's just as important. This is bragging rights to Pike County going on here, Bill. Jam packed to the rafters, man. No doubt about it. So the big blue of Shelby Valley Wildcats taking on the Pikeville Panthers. And daggone if WPRG isn't bringing basketball because we got the 60th going tonight as well. And uh, we've got 58. 58 to him and everything. So we're about ready for the opening tip. That's Big Bobby Keys going against Murray Garvin, and we're underway. It's claimed by the Pikeville Panthers. Here's J.P. Blair handing the ball out around the top of the perimeter. He starts his drive, gets his pass down there to Garvin. Garvin back to Kevin Lockhart, top of the key. Good pass in there to Blair. Blair put up a little shot. Good. 4-2 for Blair. So we'll take a pause uh, while uh, just playing old uh, tissues thrown out on the court, Kent. <laughs> just, just old TP. <laughs> they, can, they can call it competitor or whatever they want to, right? It's TP. <laughs> I've seen it before. So Pikeville gets on the uh, scoring board first. Of course, Pikeville uh, home on the scoreboard tonight. This is for all the marbles of the 59th District Tournament, the championship. Of course, both teams will advance on to play in the region, but I'm sure both teams would like to have that title under the belt. Here comes Shelby Valley with it now. They get it into the point guard. He's doing most of the ball handling for Shelby Valley. Rodney Kaiser brings it across the timeline, working on that left side. He's guarded in there by Lockhart. Gives out to Tad Justice, a 6'2 senior for this uh, Wildcat team. Find J.J. Jeremy Johnson, a fine three-point shooter in Jeremy Johnson. Here's Chad Justice, breaks open on that basket. 
Touch it up. And Mr. They're Kate waving it off. it off. Ansi's waving it off. The basket will not count as Chad Justice. They say they got him for the offensive charge. Bill Bevins along with Kent Carter for the play-by-play -play and color commentary for TV, Five Sports, and WPRG. Fans, hold on to your seats. We're in for a uh, good one. Both want... teams show press, Bill. Sure do. Here's Tyrone Mullins. Gets it up there to Keith Lockhart. One of the Lockhart brothers starting. Now gives it back there to his brother, Kevin. Back to Keith. Identical twins in there. There's Murray Garvin. He can shoot the shot. Stops and pops from 15. No good. Scrap for the rebound. And here comes the Wildcats claimed by uh, Jeremy Johnson. Here comes uh, Rodney Kaiser. Gets over there. Chad Justice. He was open for a three. He didn't take the shot. Back to Johnson. Johnson. Here's Rodney Kaiser. Pulls the trigger. No good from three. Rebounded by J.P. Blair, the junior down there. 6'3 junior, and he's a good one, too, for these Pikeville Panthers. He gives over to Lockhart. That's Keith Lockhart into Big Murray Garvin. Turns, spins inside the paint, stripped away. Here comes Shelby Valley with it. 6.43, left to go on the score clock. Two to nothing, their score, as uh, Shelby Valley has failed to get on that uh, scoreboard tonight. They're looking for their first score. Here's Chad Justice. He's open for three, pulls the trigger. Got right it! Down. Three to two in favor of Shelby Valley. District tournament action at its finest. 6.25, here's come Tyrone Mullins. Mullins, he gets around to everybody, stops from 10, high arching shot, good. And I believe he's fouled by the ice man, Bobby Keys. That's the way it's gonna be. Kent, what about this pace so far with uh, 6.18 left to go in the first quarter? We're just underway. Can these teams keep up that pace? Yes, they can. Both teams are in great shape. They've done this all season long. These are both high scoring teams. They both love to press. They love to shoot the three. And they love to get the ball up and down the court in a hurry, Bill. You've seen them, you know it. Uh, I was talking to the assistant coaches a little bit earlier and I told them I, I expected that score clock to light up tonight as uh, both of them scored up in the 90s in the first game up here. And uh, Mullins sure. misses everything with, at the uh, charge strike, so it'll go back over to Shelby Valley, who leads this Pikeville team. Did you see Rodney Kaiser inciting the, the fans to get up on their feet? Sure did. Here comes Shelby Valley with the visitors on the scoreboard. Pikeville leads 4-3, to 6-17 left to go in the first quarter play. I'm Bill Bevins for the play-by-play, -play. and Miller Kent Carter is joining me tonight. He joined uh, old buddy Ivor Bannon for the uh, color commentary in the girls game. And it was Shelby Valley girls uh, winning the district uh, championship up here. A whistle and a foul I'll go against Kevin Lockhart at Pikeville as he tried to strip it away from Rodney Kaiser in there. Both teams, Bill, are showing that they're going to defend the ball all the way out to the timeline tonight. Four to three, your score, 6-0-4. Left to go in the uh, first quarter with uh, Pikeville out on top right now. Here's Bobby Keys left baseline guarded in there by Mr. J.P. Blair. Out to Kaiser, Kaiser, we out there near uh, center court, out to uh, Jeremy Johnson, gives it in there to Bobby Keys. Good pass to Jamie Roberts, pulls the trigger from 15, right down. Five to four, so both teams just trading baskets here, early going in the boys' 59th district tournament championship game at the Virgie Athletic Center. Kevin Lockhart gives it, crosses the timeline to J.P. Blair, long cross court pass to Tyrone Mullins. Mullins. Here's Murray Garvin, pulls the trigger from three, a little bit short, gets his own rebound, tried to put it back up. A whistle, I believe we'll have a foul on Chad Justice, I believe. Foul on Kaiser. Kaiser, okay, excuse me. 5.32 left to go, first quarter with uh, Shelby Valley out on top, five to four. Here's Pikeville with it. Kevin Lockhart gets it in there to Tyrone Mullins, working around the top of the perimeter, finds Kevin Lockhart. I believe they got him for a what? Stepping on out of bounds. Stepped on the sideline, Bill. So turnover. We'll go back over to uh, the Shelby Valley Wildcats. Chad Justice will be bringing the inbounds, and you're right, Kent. Both teams uh, applying the uh, full court pressure defense, coast to coast, so to speak. Here comes Jeremy Johnson. Johnson, he's guarded closely in there by Tyrone Mullins of Pikeville. Pikeville out in that man to man right now. Chad Justice with it. Gives out there to uh, Jeremy Johnson, top of the key. Gives in there a good pass to uh, Rodney Kaiser, just lays up and in. Seven to four in favor of Shelby Valley. Here comes Kevin Lo Keith Lockhart with it. He pulls up a dribble, dribble, he got in trouble, but now finds Murray Garvin, he pulls the trigger. 15, that jump shot won't go, and that power to claim the rebound is the Iceman, Bobby Keys. Here comes Chad Justice, stops from 15, baseline, right it down. So Chad Justice uh, getting some points on the scoreboard. Long pass to Garvin. Garvin working underneath the basket. Might have been a foul, let's see. They got him for steps. And that was close, that could go either way. Well, could have nine to four score in favor of Shelby Valley. 
early going. 4.36 left to go in the first quarter of play. Rodney Kaiser with it. He'll work in there against Kevin Lockhart for the Pikeville Panthers. Of course, both teams are uh, fighting for the right to claim the uh, championship of the boys' 59th district tournament. Here's Bobby Keyes, gives over to Jeremy Johnson. Jeremy Johnson cut off in there by two Pikeville defenders, and Mr. Casey says, you walk with it, young man. Turn over, it'll go back over to Pikeville. There's nobody like Ancy Casey to call a ball game, Bill. He gets into it. He puts the motions into it, too. <laughs> He's exciting to watch I, I, in of himself. I like his officiating. Here's number 24, Tyrone Mullen, now doing the ball handling. He, long so shot from outside, wouldn't go, but what we get, three seconds, Kent? Or, no, we got no a foul. we're going to have a foul on J.P. Blair. He cleared out with his free hand, Bill. You know, a lot of players have learned to use that off hand to give themselves space to shoot. Exactly. Here comes uh, Shelby Valley with Jamie Roberts. Roberts, good pass to Bobby Keyes. Shot up, uh, whistle on a foul on Lockhart. So that'll send Bobby Keyes to the free throw line for two. Now I want to mention something about that call. And this indicates that Ancy's been studying the college game some. That is called way more in college than it is in high school. In fact, the rule in high school on clearing out is much more liberal. You can do much more with your free hand. Good analysis. So uh, that will send uh, Bobby Keyes, the ice man, to the charity strike for two shots, trying to increase that lead for his Shelby Valley Wildcat team. Shelby Valley coming in here, I believe, with Rutherford of 14 and 14 as Bobby Keyes puts that dribble down, shot up. Good. And uh, as you'll recall, Ken, he was having trouble with that charity strike the other night against uh, the uh, Millard Mustangs. Uh, he couldn't hit a fat bear in the rear with a blow door. <laughs> But tonight, let's see, misses that one. And here comes Tyrone Mullen. Uh, excuse me, I believe that's number 23, Todd Smith, now into the lineup. Starter Blair, earlier in the season, wasn't he, Bill? J.P. Blair, nice drive down the right baseline. Score two for J.P. Blair. Here comes Rodney Kaiser with it for Shelby Valley. They work it around the perimeter. That's Jeremy Johnson now doing the ball handling. Stops from 10, right baseline, a little bit short. And I believe they'll get Jeremy Johnson for uh, over the back as he tried to uh, get the rebound after the missed shot that time. 3.42 left to go in the first quarter play. 10-6 in favor of uh, the Wildcats of Shelby Valley. Here comes number 23, Todd Smith for Pikeville. Gives to J.P. Blair. Blair left baseline shot up and won't go that time. He had a good chance at it, Kent. Just couldn't get it to go in for him. But you know, Bobby Keys takes up a lot of room in the middle. Sure does, and we've got a reach-in foul on uh, Lockhart. Number 32, that'll go against Kevin Lockhart. As Tyrone Mullins gets off the Pikeville bench, Coach Howard Walden uh, gets him back in there. Three twenty-nine left to go. Here's Chad Justice. Shelby Valley with the basketball. Jeremy Johnson into Bobby Key. Chad Justice from three, right baseline, a little bit short this time. Gets his own rebound and, oh. deck and hits the deck hard. He might have hurt himself. He's down on that. He's a little bit slow getting up. We uh, right here in front of us says he hit the deck hard that time. He had to feel that in Kent. I heard it up here. These two teams, Bill, aren't going to leave anything out here tonight. You know that? Go They're on. going home empty. Matt Atkins now into the Pikeville lineup. Here's Smith with it. J.P. Blair ties a long three. No good. Off to the side. Ball will go back out of bounds. They say last touch by Shelby Valley. 10-6 the score. 3-0-6. Bill Bevins along with Kent Carter for the play-by-play -play and color commentary for TV 5 Sports and WPRD. Here comes the Pikeville with it. There's Matt Aggins, slaps the ball, and tries to get it in bounds. Got five seconds back there. Has trouble getting it in, but here's Tyrone Mullins up inside the paint. Shot up, wouldn't go. And uh, both teams up high for the rebound. We've got a whistle and a foul. They're going to be on Tyrone Mullins. Let's see. Yes, sir. He's a leaper in there, man. He can get up for his high. You think. know, they bill him as only 5'11", but he plays the forward spot a uh, good three inches shorter than some of the guards for Pablo, and he can sky. He's a junior, so he'll be back next year. As uh, this uh, Pikeville team, I believe, starts uh, a couple of juniors and three seniors. But you know, Bill, both these teams jump well. Sure do, as uh, they were, that was uh, very evident on that play, 10 to six with exactly three minutes. Left to go in the first quarter in favor of Shelby Valley right now. Shelby Valley visitors on the scoreboard tonight up here at the Virgie Athletic Center. Here's Rodney Kaiser guarded in there by Mullins for Pikeville. 
Jeremy Johnson. Johnson into the ice, man. Bobby Keys, the steps. Yes, sir. Good cow. I thought he shuffled his feet a little bit here, right here in front of us. And uh, Bobby, I believe, is just a, is he a sophomore or a junior, Bill? Bobby Keys, he's a junior. He's got a, he's got some more developing development left to do. Uh, his lower body, his legs are developed well. If he develops his shoulders, he'll be a real force inside next year. Jeremy Johnson, 6'4", just a junior, too. So uh, they've got a lot of these boys coming back. And speaking of Jeremy Johnson, there he is from 15. Good. 12 to 6 as uh, Shelby Valley's doubled the score right now on the scoreboard. 229 left to go in the first quarter play. Here's Matt Atkins. A block and foul on Jeremy Johnson, as uh, the official says, he uh, just uh, cut off that baseline on him that time. It's a good call, too, Bill. And Jeremy picks up his second early. He needs to think about that kind of play because uh, the Wildcats need him out there as long as they can have him. So it'll be a Pikeville's ball. Here comes uh, Todd Smith out front, around the top of the perimeter, drives inside the paint. Good dish off to Murray Garvin, who lays it up and in. So I believe that they may be Murray Garvin's first score tonight, Kent. That is. That's his first two tonight. Well, he's a little bit slow about getting on track, but I'll tell you what, he can flat fill it up. Well, that speaks highly of uh, Chad Justice and Bobby Keys because they're drawing the assignment on Murray Garvin. They've been switching off on him a lot, and uh, Chad gives up a lot of height to Murray Garvin, and still yet he's so athletic that he's doing a great job. As Pike will put puts the uh, full court pressure defense on him man to man, but Shelby Valley breaks it. Here's Rodney Kaiser, and they got him for palming the ball. Good call. As you know, we had that, over. I'm sorry, Bill, we had that call in the girls game, and that's the only two times I've seen it this year. You don't get it, uh, you don't see it call much, but uh, every now and then they get you with it. Here's Tyrone Mullins doing the ball handle now for Pikeville over to J.P. Burr, left baseline. Puts a move, and a good pass to Murray Garvin underneath, and they work the same play, put it back up and in, and can't they work the same play again? As Murray Garvin, uh, a good uh, feed off in there. And Chad Justice picks up his second. And uh, that's what Pavel was looking to correct and do earlier is uh, drive the ball in and dish off to uh, Garvin or Blair or whoever. And actually, it was Blair dishing off to Garvin the way that they're working the old two-man game there, Billy. So they pull it to within two, and they uh, got a chance to cut in that lead even more to cut it to one as Murray Garvin tries to uh, complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. He eyes the basket, puts the shot up, right her down, 12 to 11, 154 left to go in the first quarter of play. Here comes Rodney Kaiser. As it's everything we expected so far, Kent. In the early going, here's Jamie Roberts with it for Shelby Valley. Gets it to Rodney Kaiser. Kaiser over to uh, Jeremy Johnson. That baseline makes a 360 spin and move inside the paint. And what a move by Jeremy Johnson that time. 14 to 11, Shelby Valley. Here comes uh, Mullins with it. Turnover. Ball picked up. Let's see. Scrap for it. Here comes Pikeville with it. Matt Aggins. Long cross court pass to uh, Blair. Blair lays it up and in. 14 to 13, and man, what a ball game. District term action at its finest. 112 left to go in the first quarter. I'm Bill Bevins for the play by play, and uh, Miller Kent Carter joining us tonight for the color commentary for TV5 Sports. Jeremy Johnson. Johnson looks inside, almost thrown away. This is out there at the top of perimeter where Rodney Kaiser yells out instructions to his teammates. He's guarded in there by Tyrone Mullins. Oh, and uh, turnover, so it'll go back over to Pikeville as we've got a new player in for Shelby Valley. I believe that's number 23, and that's David Edmonds. You got to come to the ball. Here's Mullins with it. Gives over our two J.P. Blair. He was open from three. He can hit that three-pointer out there. Can't forget those feet set. We watched him earlier in the year. Most of the players on pop would like to shoot it. And there's Tyrone Mullins. That high arching shot wouldn't go for him, but rebounded. But by uh, Smith, tap back up, no good. And rebounded by uh, Bobby Keys for Shelby Valley. Here comes Jeremy Johnson. Johnson gives in there to Dave Edmonds inside the paint. Good fake, put the shot up, good. 4-2 for Dave Edmonds, 16 to 13 in favor of the Wildcats. Here comes Tyrone Mullins with it for Pikeville. Breaks the press easy. J.P. Blair, he was open that right baseline, now starts to drive inside the paint. Little 10 foot jumper up, no good. Rebounded by Kaiser. Out to uh, walking on uh, Jeremy oh, Johnson. Oh. Just, a, just a mental error that time, Ken, as he got in a little bit too much of a hurry. Eight seconds, it's all left in the first quarter play, 16 to 13, Shelby Valley. Here comes Todd Smith, so they'll have the last chance to put two on the score clock here. Smith, he better get the shot up, puts it up, and won't go for him. And uh, we've completed one quarter of play with our score 16 to 13 in favor of Shelby Valley. We're going to take a real quick break right now, Dr. Don, for these uh, commercial messages. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG. We live.
live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Sharing a big family moment, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds and plume Wi-Fi. Call or go online to learn more. Okay, we're back at uh, Birdsey Athletic Center where it's our score, Shelby Valley over Pikeville right now, 16 to 13. And we've got uh, Ivor Bantam down in the uh, stands. And uh, Ivor, we're gonna turn it back over to you. I'll tell you what, we got some excitement down here behind their Shelby Valley bench. What do you girls think about this game? It's great so far. This is great so far. What's your all's names? Kelly Burke. Tony Mellons. Well, who, what, do you, who, what do you think? Who's uh, the big players you like out here tonight? Uh, Nathan Berger, Jeremy Johnson, Bobby Keys. <laughs> All right, guys, you hear it from behind the Shelby Valley bench. Back to you. All right, thank you, Ira. Ira down there interviewing uh, some of the, uh, look like the cheerleaders down there. So we're back to action, 16 to 13, getting ready for the uh, second quarter of play. It'll be... Uh, 16 to 13, our score in favor of Shelby Valley, and the uh, ball will belong to uh, Shelby Valley. That'll be Jeremy Johnson getting ready to throw the ball in bounds for his Wildcats. Looks underneath, long pass to Roberts. Good play for Shelby Valley that time. Put the shot up, won't go, but a whistle and a foul. I believe they'll get JP Blair right here in front of his camp. JP knows he did it, Bill. You could see the look on his face. As they just set the screen out here at the top of the perimeter, and Jamie Roberts just broke it down underneath of it, Kent. That's exactly right, Bill. Right you are, buddy. 7.58 left to go in the first half of play. The boys' championship game of the 59th district tournament. Roberts eyes the basket. First free throw, good. He'll be there for one more. Second shot, good again. 18 to 13 as Shelby Valley increases that lead to five. Here's Todd Smith with it. Over to uh, the big man, Murray Garvin. Garvin makes a good move inside the paint. Little 10-foot jump shot up good. No, they wave it off. They say they got him for the offensive charge. Foul on Garvin, his first. And Ansi Casey is absolutely the most active referee <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he is a dandy. Here comes Rodney Kaiser in backcourt. Now he gets it across the timeline to Jeremy Johnson on the right baseline. Out there to Edmonds. Edmonds back to Kaiser. Bill, if you get a chance, watch the play between uh, Jamie Roberts and uh, the Lockhart boy, Kevin. Uh, they're mugging each other. And uh, it was tapped up that time by uh, Shelby Valley, but they just couldn't get it to uh, fall down. Here comes J.P. Blair. Starts a drive in there behind the back dribble to Todd Smith. Smith back over to Kevin Lockhart. Lockhart, they're just working around the top of the perimeter right now. Murray Garvin spins from 10. Shot up, won't go. Leave it banded by Tyrone Mullins. He tries to put it up, a whistle and a foul on Rodney Kaiser. As Murray Garvin made a good spinning move that time right there at the uh, inside the paint, Kent just couldn't get it to fall down. He just left the defender flat-footed. It was a good, uh, good looking move though. He got a nice jump shot in there. Tyrone Mullins. And you have to get up high to block his jump shot because he's about 6'4". That'll be uh, Tyrone Mullins. Watch this high arching shot. Good, brings rain with it tonight, but as I said before, it's brings pretty rain. when it goes down. Brings rain with it. And into the games, Kent Trivet, the three-point shooter. So, uh, but uh, I, we were commenting the other night, uh, of course, Kent, if a team, if teams play uh, the Shelby Valley in a uh, zone, Kent will bust it all night long during that man-to-man, -man, so he may have trouble getting that ball up. We'll uh, just have to watch it as play develops. I was just wondering, Bill, who, who moves into the point guard spot when uh, Rodney Kaiser steps out for these Wildcats? Because I really don't believe Trivet, who is a pure shooter, is really that greater ball handler. Uh, Chad Justice handles the ball up for him. And, uh, of course, you got uh, Jeremy Johnson right here. He starts as a guard. Pretty good-sized guard, 6'4 guard. <laughs> Here's Dave Evans with it. 
Edmonds trying to hit Bobby Keys as he broke loose underneath the basket. Keys spins from five feet right down. As Bobby Keys scores underneath, 20 to 14. Shelby Valley out by six over these uh, these Pikeville Panthers. Here's Murray Garvin from three. Shot up oh good. My. As he buries a three out there for uh, Pikeville. 6.39 left to go in the first half of play. Shelby Valley out on top, 20 to 17. Here's Bobby Keys, the ice man, doing the ball handle. Almost stripped away. Here's Kent Trivet from three. Watch out. No, in and out. It, it rolled down. Just come back out on him, Kent. It was down in there so far I thought you could count it. Kevin Lockhart over to J.P. Blair makes a nice move, but he's cut off in there. Good defense by Shelby Valley right now. It'll go back over to Pikeville, as they say, last touch by a Wildcat. And that is a Shelby Valley Wildcat, of course. 20 to 17, 614 left to go in the first half of play. Murray spotted, I, spotted Ira B. We'll get him in a few minutes here. Okay, Keith Lockhart rebounds for Pikeville. Murray Garvin spins inside the paint. Little jumper up, shot up. Won't go, but a whistle and foul on Jeremy Johnson. How many is that on Jeremy? Oh, uh, if I've got this right, JJ's got three, and he's going to have to take a seat. Sure is. With 6.05 left to go, they can't leave him in there. No way, I don't think. And uh, there comes uh, Nathan, Nathan Burger, Burger, a 6'2 sophomore. And uh, that's, uh, that's some significant foul trouble now for these Wildcats because they need JJ. End of the game for Pible will be Tedrick Evangelista, a speed merchant. Sure is. No doubt about that. And uh, he's a 5'7 speed merchant. Uh, 6.05 left to go. All right, sinks the first one. Second one's up and good for Murray Garvin. Evangelist is pressing, Pobble's pressing. Trivet with the ball. Okay, here comes Kent Trivet, and thanks, Kent, as uh, they give it into uh, Dave Edmonds right baseline. Tries to get it into uh, Bobby Keys, but uh, they say last touch by Murray Garvin as it just went off his knee that time. We'd like to uh, thank all the uh, hospitality people who's uh, done a good job up here for us, Kent, up here at uh, Virgie Athletic Center during this tournament. I have never seen a better hospitality room. I sincerely hope that uh, Kevin and Adam and uh, PD and Pete are getting the kind of gold star treatment we've gotten. A reach in foul by Keith Lockhart as Bobby Keys made his move down inside the paint that time. 19 to 20, a one point ball game. And right now it's in favor of Shelby Valley. 550 left to go in the first half of play in the boys championship game of the 59th district tournament being held at the Virgie Athletic Center, and we've got Dr. Don to bring it to him on camera for TV5. Here comes Bobby Keys at the uh, charity strike. First free throw good. We'll be in there for one more, 21-19. JP, uh, excuse me, JJ Bailey into the game for Pipeville, Bill. Number 55, the uh, Good football player. Uh, unfortunately, hurt that knee and uh, still got that thing wrapped up, Kent. And you hate to see that because that's 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 a serious injury to an athlete. Here Look at Evangelista. Tedrick Evangelista, the speed demon. <laughs> Here's J.J. Bailey, open from three, pulls the trigger, shot up, wouldn't go, rebounded by Nathan Berger. Out to Kent Trivet, now it's behind the back dribble that time. Well, I'm going to take it back. <laughs> I honestly thought Kent was a pure shooter. What a block, Bill! Sure was. No doubt about it as uh, Pikeville just uh, blocked it on him. Here comes Kevin Lockhart shot up. Rebounded by big Bobby Keys underneath the basket. Gives out there to Trivet. That's Shelby Valley's on the run. Out to Berger. Now Trivet, top of the perimeter. And look Trivet. who went out to pick up Trivet. Nathan Berger from 12, wouldn't go. Tapped out. Let's see who comes out there with it. Here comes Berger. Foul. That had to be foul. foul. No, jump ball. Possession arrow gives it to Pikeville. I I've never disagreed with Fancy Casey, but I, that was a foul. I've never done it before, but that was a foul, Bill. I believe he missed that one. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> give him credit. Most time, he's right on the money, though, Kent. But, uh, of course, he called it. Here's Murray Garvin. Shot up. One go. Rebounded by Nathan Berger. And uh, we've got oh, a violation. Oh. Nathan Berger just got a little bit too excited. What I was saying earlier down here, when Trivet got the ball out on the perimeter in the three-point range, they sent Garvin out to front him, and you know why. 
Exactly. Big Murray Garvin out there because uh, if Kent gets those feet set, man, it's uh, most time it's all over with. Here comes Kevin Lockhart for Pikeville. Out there to J.J. Bailey doing the ball handling around the perimeter now. Finds Tedrick Evangelista. Evangelista starts his drive. He's cut off in there by Berger. And here's Murray Garvin for a long three. Short rebounded by Dave Edmonds of Shelby Valley. Out to Trivet. Trivet. Here he is. Pulls the trigger from three. Oh. Too long this time. Rebounded by Berger, but uh, tapped up. And it goes back over to Pikeville. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll belong to Shelby Valley. And Bobby Osborne like that. He patted Anthony on the rear. <laughs> Good call, Anthony. 21-19 in favor of Shelby Valley. We've got a dandy, no doubt about it. Here comes the uh, Wildcats. Kent Trivet doing the ball handling now. So they hit, they put him in there as a point card doing the uh, ball handling, Kent. I got to give him uh, kudos. He's doing it. Kent Trivet. Got it. Pulls the trigger for three. And uh, he kept shooting him, and I knew he, uh, he'd get one to fall for him, Mark Kent. Sooner or later, had to come. Here's Tedrick Evangelista. Uh, here's Bailey with it. Bailey, out there. Walking. Steps. Ball will go back over to Shelby Valley. We'd like to uh, thank the young gentleman who brought us some ice water can. I'll tell you what, that sure goes down good. Oh, yes, we needed it. I was dry as a bone. Here comes Shelby Valley with it. Into the ice man, Bobby Keys. He's way out there near that uh, center court line. He has trouble finding somebody. Coach uh, Howard Wallen wanted five second call that time. He might have had a good point too, Billy. Nathan Berger, good pass in there to Bobby Keys. He just lays it up and in inside the paint. 26 to 19. Here comes Tyrone Mullins for Pikeville. Gives out to Smith. Smith out to Mullins. We're just working around the perimeter. There's Matt Aggins. Makes a good spin and move inside the paint. Good. 26 to uh, 21 in favor of Shelby Valley. Here comes Kent Trivet on the run. Nice behind the back dribble. He can down that ball out there, Kent. Doing a pretty good he job sure of it so is. far. I've got to take back. You know, generally when you have a shooter of Kent's caliber, uh, they don't uh, handle the ball well. But uh, he's uh, breaking the mold tonight. Here's Ch uh, Dave Edmonds with it. Out to Roberts. Roberts, top of the key. Nathan Berger now makes a good pass in there to Edmonds underneath. Lays it up and in. Score two for Dave Edmonds. Here comes Pike Deal. Murray Garvin, 10 foot jumper up, good. As uh, Murray Garvin forced that one a little bit, but uh, that was a good move, Kent. Oh, look at this pressure. It's really turned up now. He's having trouble. They've turned it up a notch, no doubt about it. And stripped away by Eggins of Pikeville. Here's J.P. Blair, lays it up and in. As Pikeville's coming back, 28 Gotta to 25. Gotta get some help in the backcourt. Kent Trivet. And uh, bad stripped, pass, bad pass. Stripped away by Pikeville, but claimed by Jamie Roberts. Here's Nathan Berger, passing there to Bobby Keyes, who gets it. Away and just lays it up and in. 30 to 25. Shelby Valley. Here's JP Blair. Shot up. Won't go. Scrapped for the rebound. And they're letting them play right now, Kent. I think you could call it that. <laughs> Here comes Pikeville. He walked. Still and walk, but, he walked. But good defensive pressure by Pikeville. Give these Panthers credit right now, Kent. Bobby Keyes saying to the crowd, get up. Get up. Trying to get this uh, crowd cheered on, and right now it, it, it's not going to take a whole lot to get that done. 30 to 25 with 210 left to go in the first half of play. Here comes uh, Chad Justice, gets the ball in there to Roberts. Roberts, top of the key at the foul line. He's cut off in there by Matt Atkins of Pikeville. Now they back it out there to Berger. Nathan Berger, the 6'2 sophomore, into the Iceman, spins right or down. I want to mention this, Bill, before you take over. Bobby Keys is taking it straight to Murray Garvin. And that's what he's got to do. He's, he's got the size in there. Both those boys, I think they least about 6'4", 6'5". Into Garvin. Garvin spins. Shot up and good. And Garvin's doing it on the other end for Pikeville, Kent. They're neither one intimidated by the other. 32 to 27, and that's a classic matchup. That's a good one. Here comes Jamie Roberts. Roberts. Stops from 10, shot up, and won't go. Rebounded by Murray Garvin. I thought he might have forced that one a little bit. Let's see, ball goes out of bounds. It'll go back over to Shelby Valley. They say, last touch by Tyrone Mullins. Kent Trivet is playing the game of his life and only has three points. He, he's hustling out there, as all these boys here. And there we've got the 6'4 freshman in, Matthew Baker. And I wonder, this Brandy Baker that's uh, in the eighth grade up here, I believe that might be his sister, Kent. You think, oh yeah, I bet it is. And check this out. They're playing them both, a double low post. 
Matthew Baker and Bobby Key. So they've got two men in there, six five. So Shelby Valley got a big lineup in there right now. The double low post. Yeah, but you don't get to see that much, Bill. Matthew Baker, the freshman, outside top of the perimeter. He's having trouble finding somebody. Gives to Jamie Roberts. Good give and go. And uh, laid up and in by Jamie Roberts on a foul on, uh, I believe, Kevin Lockhart. A good give and go that time uh, for uh, Shelby Valley, Kent. I think he called that on Todd Smith. No, 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 it's Kevin. I don't know who it's on. <laughs> he gave the numbers for uh, Todd Smith. But it looked like Lockhart here in front of us. <laughs> it did. <laughs> and, and, and it don't jive with what the PA announcer's telling me either. 34-27 are score in favor of Shelby Valley right now. The visitors on the scoreboard with a minute and eight seconds left to go in the first half of play. I'm Bill Bevins along with Kent Carter for the play-by-play -play and color commentary for TV5. Jamie Roberts, free throw up, no good, rolls out. Rebounded by Matt Atkins of Pikeville. Here comes J.J. Bailey. Bailey stopped from 15, shot up too hard off the back of the rim. Bailey's going to get called for the foul. Bailey, uh, exactly right as he uh, tried to get in, but he followed his shot. That's just good, aggressive play. you got to follow your shot, though, Kent. It, it, was a, it was a good mental play by Bailey. He just took it a little too far. One minute left to go in the first half of play, 34-20. Seven in favor of the Wildcats of Shelby Valley as Nathan Berger goes to the charity strike for Coach Bobby Osborne's Wildcats. And look at this size that Shelby Valley has in here on the front right now. They got two, six, five in there, and uh, Nathan Berger at six, two. Berger shot up, won't go at the free throw line, rebounded by Greg Murray Garvin for Pikeville. Here comes J.P. Blair with it. Out to Matt Atkins. We're just working around the perimeter right now. Garvin puts that three-pointer up, good. He buries it, so Garvin can work inside or go outside, and that's a big advantage. 34 to 30 in favor of Shelby Valley. Pikeville sticking right with him as uh, Murray Garvin just taps it away, so Murray Garvin doing a little bit of it all right now for these Pikeville Panthers. J.P. Blair, a long three-pointer up, rebounded by Matthew Baker. He might have walked with it, no call. Out there to Kent Trivet. 21 seconds left in the first half of play. As Kent Trivet holds up that fist and calls the play. They may hold it for one here, Kent. I would with 15 seconds. Let's see what they do. Kent Trivet. I like the play of Trivet in this first half, Bill. He's uh, definitely has him. Here's Matthew Baker. Five seconds. Let's see what they do. Matthew Baker stopped from 15. Shot up a little bit short. Let's see. Jump ball, but uh, the horn has sounded, so that ends the first half of play with our score. 34 to 30, and Kent, it's been everything uh, we've said right here in this first half. Bill, this is just incredible. I'm, I'm awestruck. I'm serious. I am awestruck. You won't get more for your money than what these two teams have given the fans here tonight and what the people are going to get to see that watches on WPRG. I don't know that you're going to find better basketball anywhere, Don. Bill, I just don't think you're going to find it. You won't do it. So with that, uh, we're going to take a break for these uh, commercial messages, and uh, we'll bring it right back to you. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. Parkview Pharmacy in Mini is now offering vaccines for flu, shingles, and pneumonia. We also offer RX flavor for children's medicine. Delivery service is available. We have a collection of the most popular Candleberry candles. Parkview Pharmacy has been servicing all your pharmaceutical needs for over 13 years. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. Give us a call at 606-377-2117. Christy, Valerie, and all the friendly staff at Parkview Pharmacy would like to say good luck to the Jaguar. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird. We never get hacked. Nope. No, we don't. We live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life. 
giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution, encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. It's halftime. It's a tremendous game. The uh, Wildcats of Shelby Valley leading the Panthers 34 to 30. It's excitementville over here in the Shelby Valley territory. And I wanted to interview a quick interview of an old friend of mine, Fred Baker. Fred has attended every one of these Shelby Valley games. Fred, what do you think about tonight's game? I think tonight's game is a wonderful game. And uh, if our boy had made the foul shot and uh, and the quick walk with the ball, we've been way ahead of it. But if they don't beat what they're doing, we come out on the losing end. If, I believe we come out on losing it, we're in if we, if we don't stop that. Well, Don, there you hear from one of Shelby Valley's top fans, Fred Baker. Fred, always good to see you out at these games. Don, can you stay with me just a minute? What do y'all think about tonight's game? Oh, it's pretty exciting. Stand up a minute. Don, I love interviewing these ladies. What was your name? Kathy. Kathy Newsom. Uh -huh. Yeah. What, what do you think about tonight's game? Well, I hope we win. It's very exciting. What are you doing this year? Going to Moorhead. How do you like it? It's all right. It's pretty hard. Good talking to you, Kathy. 
What do you guys think about tonight's game? It's real exciting. What's your name? Spring and Ethan. What's your name? Stand up. What's your name? Yvette Burt. Yvette, who do you like out there playing tonight? What do you, what do you, which of the guys do you like? <laughs> I put her on the spot. Oh no, Don. <laughs> what do you guys think about tonight's game? Stand up a minute. Stand up like see on camera. I think it's great. What's your name? Judy Jones. All right. Hey, Don. We got to get one sponsor. Well, this year's sponsor. Now, come on, Glenn. You got to stand up. Come on, Glenn. You know, I don't know who this guy is. He kind of just sits here all the time, you know, doesn't do anything. Just guy doesn't even work. I think he's unemployed, but <laughs> number one fan in the whole Park County. It's Glenn Dameron, folks. Dameron's contracting. And uh, Glenn, what do you think about tonight's game? Well, it's a real good game. It's too close to call right now. It'll be a good one. I'll tell you what, if you, it's causing you to, I, I know we're, you, I, I walked by a minute ago and Glenn was just a shaking, Don. But I think Shelby Valley will be coming out on top by maybe one point. All right, there you hear it. Now, Don, I want to get these pretty ladies right up here. Come here, honey. Come here, honey. What's your name? Come down here. Come down here just a second. Don, can you get this pretty lady? What's your name? Sarah. And uh, what do you think about tonight's game? It's fun. I saw you dancing around and just having a great time. Boy, you must like this basketball stuff. Yeah. Don, there's one of the uh, futures, future uh, big fans and supporters up here. All right. Where do you guys want me to go? You want me to go down here? Oh, here's Bill Wesley. Bill Wesley, come up here a minute. What do you think about tonight's game? It's been great so far. Is I tell you what, is your heart pounding? You, yeah. Well, who do you like out there? Who you've seen that players that you like? What do you think is going to happen in the second half? Well, I think Shelby Valley is going to come out, and I think they're going to try their hardest, and I think they'll win. The three, you hear it from the three-point king of Pike County, folks. The future King Kelly Coleman of basketball in Pike County. All right, thanks a lot, Bill Wesley. Let me walk on down through here. Here's another real pretty lady. What? Come on, what's your name? Stand up a minute, come on. What do you think about tonight's game? Well, okay, I can't get a reaction out of everybody, Don, but I'll tell you what. Wait a minute, one more Shelby Valley fan, Don. Look, I want you to look at this guy. He's got cat paws on, Don. What's your name? Don How do you like tonight's game? It's good. Don, I'll tell you what. This place is just action-packed. I'm going to send it back to you for just a minute, okay? Okay, let's, uh, let's take one we'll quick, quick break, Bill, and uh, get a word in from our sponsors, and then we'll bring back the second half. This is WBRG Telecom Cable Channel 5, TV Sports. Sharing a big family moment, working hard from home, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age where reliable internet has never been more important. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds up to one gig and plume adaptive Wi-Fi. Make sure your home's ready for life in the broadband age. Call our local service team or visit Gearheart Broadband online to learn more. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas so you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the Slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Where we're getting ready for the third period of play. 34 to 30 in favor of Shelby Valley. And uh, listen to Ivor Bannum there at halftime. Interview a bunch of this crowd up here. Boy, he has fun, don't he, Bill? He sure does. We all have fun, though, really. Camp, we're getting ready for the third period of play. Uh, in uh, just a minute, we'll try to get some of those uh, first half statistics to him. As we're underway, here comes uh, Rodney Kaiser with it for Shelby Valley out to Justice. Now they find the Iceman Bobby Keys out there. Kaiser, right side, out to Jeremy Johnson, out top. 
Bobby Key spins from 10, right down. That shot rolls in for him, 36 to 30. <laughs> Here's Pikeville with it. Foul will go against Bobby Keys. And uh, Kent, while we've got just a little break, uh, what about some of those first half stats? All right. Uh, for uh, the Shelby Valley Wildcats, Rodney Kaiser had two, Kent Trivet three, Chad Justice five, Jeremy Johnson four, Bobby Keys ten, Jamie Roberts six, and David Edmonds four. There's Tyrone Mullins in there at the free throw line. First one won't go for it. Excuse me, that's Todd Smith. Number 23, Todd Smith out there for Pikeville. 36 to 30, 7 39 left to go in the third period. Smith yeah, misses both. Misses both. Lane violation. So he'll get one more. As Shelby Valley stepped in too quick. <laughs> Smith at the charity strike. How's that basket? Shot up. No good. So missed all three of them. So oh, that's comes, bad. <laughs> here comes Rodney Kaiser. That out, hurts when you get front. three chances. Sure does. In two, Chad Justice. Chad up over Murray Garvin. Wouldn't go in. Murray Garvin definitely intimidated him on that shot. As uh, we've got a walking, probably a walking and double dribble both. <laughs> you could have <laughs> got either one there, Kent. They had to call something, didn't they? Here comes Jeremy Johnson as he brings <laughs> the ball in play for his Shelby Valley Wildcats. Back there to Rodney Kaiser, guarded in there closely by Tyrone Mullins of Pikeville. Here's Chad Justice with it. Chad Justice stops inside the lane, shot up, blocked by Murray Garvin. As Murray Garvin went up high to slam that one back down, Kent. He can block now. We've seen it all year. He can definitely get it. 36 to 30, 17 left to go in the third quarter play of the championship game, boys 59th district tournament. We're bringing it to you for TV5 Sports from the Virgie Athletic Center. Here's J.P. Blair. Blair stops from 15, shot up, and won't go. Rebounded by Smith, back out to Murray Garvin from three, left baseline, right or down. And Kent, what is that, three of them this game or four of them? That's, uh, that's two so far for Murray Garvin. JP's got one, uh, Tyler, uh, and then, of course, Kent Trivet's got one. So here comes Chad Justice for the Shelby Valley Wildcats. There's a man that can uh, pull the trigger from three, two, Jeremy Johnson. And stripped away, but uh, claimed by Chad Justice as he had a good uh, shot at it, just wouldn't roll down. 36-33 in favor of Shelby Valley. Mullins. Puts the shot up, won't go, gets up high for his own rebound. Put back up, won't go, and rebounded by Jamie Roberts for Shelby Valley. They work it inside to big Bobby Keys. Keys into Jamie Roberts, and uh, Mullins with a steal and stripped away by Chad Justice from behind. Down the left baseline, up too hard, but put back up and in on the offensive rebound by Bobby Keys. And Bobby Keys just followed his teammate up, Kent, and uh, you got to do that. Good, good, smart basketball by Keys there. Lockhart, long shot, rebounded by J.P. Blair. It rolled off the back of there, and J.P. Blair makes a nice move. Put the shot up, won't go, and uh, Pipeville's having some real bad luck underneath. We're going to have Jamie Roberts over the back, Bill. Pipeville's getting some good shots in there right now, Kent. Uh, man, they're just going in and out. You know, that's like really that, true for both teams right now. Like that basket's got a lid on it. <laughs> I wish, I wish Don could hear us tonight. <laughs> We are rocking and rolling at the Virgie Athletic Center. Here comes Kevin Lockhart. Gets it in there to big Murray Garvin. 360 spin moving. What a pretty move by Garvin. But again, it just rolled off there. Getting shots underneath the basket, and they just won't go down. And he's got that spin move down, doesn't he, Bill? That little 360 spin move is pretty. Here's Tyrone Mullins. Taps the ball. Gets it in there to uh, Kevin Lockhart. Starts his drive. He's cut off in there by Chad Justice of Shelby Valley. There's Kevin Lockhart. He was open for the three, but instead drives in, put a little 10-foot jumper up, won't go, gets his own rebound, strap for it. And here comes J.P. Blair out to Murray Garvin. Garvin stops from 15, shot up a little bit short, rebounded by Rodney Kaiser of Shelby Valley. Here comes the Wildcats. They're on the run. Jeremy Johnson stops from 15, no good. Rebounded by big Murray Garvin. Out there to Smith, Smith. Makes a good move inside the paint, laid up and in and out again. How many have they missed in there, Kent? I've lost count. You know, he, just, he really, that time, he just uh, beat Kaiser. Sure did, had a good uh, move down the paint, just missed a uh, gimme underneath there. Who are they calling that foul on? It could have been on anybody. Who are they calling it on? The officials are still out conferring. You know, really, uh, just about everybody got a piece of him. Let's see what they call it. 
We've got time out on the court, so uh, with that, we're going to take a break for these commercial messages, and we'll bring it right back to you. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG. Sharing a big family moment, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds and plume Wi-Fi. Call or go online to learn more. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearheart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. This changes everything. Gearheart TV is available now. It's the digital TV service delivered to your smart TV or connected devices by Gearheart Broadband. Sign up now at mygtv.com. At the Virgie Athletic Center, we're right now it's our score 38 to 33 in favor of Shelby Valley. And we would like to remind our listeners that TV5 Sports and WPRG is going to bring you the 15th regional tournament action in Kent. This year it's being held down at Allen Central, the uh, Rebel territory down there. And for the bad news right here, that foul was assessed to Jeremy Johnson, Bill, and that's his fourth. So he's got to take a seat on the bench and probably sit there a long time, Kent, because there's uh, over five minutes left to go, and we're just in the third quarter. So that hurts Shelby Valley big time. He'll be there until the stretch, don't you think? Sure do, and uh, J.P. Blair connects on the first free throw. Blair shot up. <laughs> Won't go this time. And uh, there's Kent Trivet back in the lineup. Back to Rodney Kaiser at the point guard position for Shelby Valley. Gets it in there to Jamie Roberts, right side. Works around the perimeter, guarded in there by Lockhart of Pikeville. Here's Kent Trivet. Kent Trivet over to uh, Rob Kaiser, Rodney Kaiser. Out there to Chad Justice, guarded closely by Murray Garvin, but he gets by a big Garvin, puts the shot up in and out. Rebounded by Shelby Valley, shot up and in by Rodney Kaiser. How he got that one up that time, Ken, I don't know from this angle. Really, I, I can't figure that out either. <laughs> Here's uh, J.P. Blair out to Tyrone Mullins. Mullins, top of the perimeter, finds Blair on the right baseline. A whistle and a foul. Foul, I believe, will go against Chad Justice for uh, overguarding overguard in there underneath under Murray Garvin. Yeah, they, uh, they think he had him hooked. And the official stuck him with it. 40 to 34, 428 left to go in the third period of play. And Bill, that's his third. Kevin Lockhart having trouble getting the ball in bounds. Five seconds. Turnover, it'll go back over to Shelby Valley. 428 left to go, third period of play. Here comes Chad Justice with it for the Wildcats. Needs help, now finds Kent Trivet. Trivet. Good ball handling out there by Trigger right now. He's covered up in there by Tyrone Mullins and Shelby Valley wanted a foul that time. I, I think they got a legitimate gripe. That was some awful sticky D there. Anyway, it will belong to the Pikeville Panthers. Here's Kevin Lockhart with it, guarded by Kent Trivet. Lockhart out there to Tyrone Mullins. Mullins right side, doing some good ball handling out there. Now Kevin Lockhart makes a drive inside the paint. And dished it off to J.P. Blair, just laid it up and in. And that time, uh, they got it to roll in for him, Ken. As, uh, they've been doing that in this third quarter, but I believe that's the first one that's rolled down for him. And here's another turnover as Shelby Valley throws it away. Here's J.P. Blair on the run, shot up. Won't go, but a whistle and foul on Chad Justice. And now he's starting to get in foul trouble. He picks up four. So Shelby Valley is digging themselves a big hole here from what we can see of. With almost four minutes left to go in the third quarter play, they got two starters with four fouls, Chad Justice and uh, J.J., Jeremy Johnson. David Edmonds into the game for uh, Chad Justice. So that'll be J.P. Blair, who just took it to him that time, Kent. Just took it right down the middle. And most of the time, if you don't make that shot, if you take it to him, you're going to go to that charity strike. First one up good. He'll be in there for one more. This is Bill Bevins along with Kent Carter for the play-by-play -play and color commentary of the boys' 59th district tournament. We're coming to you from the Virgie Athletic Center. Second free throw, no good, but rebound and put back up and in. On the offensive rebound is Tyrone Mullins scoring for the Panthers. 40 to 39. So, folks, don't go nowhere. 
Get yourself another pop and pop that popcorn and sit back. We're in for a dandy. Here's Lockhart over to Garvin. There, we've got a blocking foul on Jamie Roberts. Is that Jamie? Number 24. That's his second. Third 40 to 39, 351 left to go. Third period of play at the Virgie Athletic Center. It'll belong to Pikeville as Kevin Lockhart gets it in there to Mullins. Mullins over to Lockhart. Lockhart right baseline. And he throws it away too hard in there. Tried to feed uh, Big Murray Garvin in there. Can't just threw it too hard. And Bill, uh, Shelby Valley has six fouls in this half and Pikeville none. So well, that's going to be a big difference in this game, in my opinion. So they try to get it into David Edmonds. Walt. Walt. Yes, sir. Good call. I thought he did. 40 to 39, 331. Matt Aggins getting ready to check into the lineup. Our J.P. Blair, and right now he's just taking it to him. Shot up in a foul. And right now, Kent, we're having difficulty in the... Uh, controlling J.P. Blair in there. He's just taking it to him. I think they probably need to get uh, Big Matthew Baker in there. And I'm sure that Coach Hard Wallen has told Mr. J.P. Blair and Mr. Murray Garvin to take it to him because they've got two of the big men, Chad Justice and Jeremy Johnson with four fouls. And he said, boys, take it to him. Post up. Drive the lane. Post up. J.P. Blair will be going to the charity strike for two. 40 to 39, trying to tie this thing up. First shot up. Rolls good. Shooters bounce. So we're all tied up at 40 apiece. 331 left to go in the third period of play. As stated before, don't go nowhere. Blair, second free throw. Good again. As Pikeville pulls out into the lead. And Kent, that may be their first lead of the ball game. It is since the first points were scored. They scored first. Here's uh, Rodney Kaiser with it. Down in the ball handling. He breaks away. Shot up, won't go. Here comes Tyron Mullins as Pikeville's on the run. Over to Big Murray Garvin, pulls the trigger from three. No good. And Kenny Fenton would have fallen down there to rock the house up here. Tapped up and in by J.P. Blair. He's doing it all. So the 6-3 uh, junior going to war up here, 40-43 to 43 in favor of Pikeville. Home on the scoreboard up here. Roberts, Roberts, down the top of the perimeter, finds Dave Edmonds. Pikeville's dropped back into the zone. Maybe they can get trivet open. A whistle and a foul. Foul will go against, I believe, Blair. Blair, J.P. Blair. That's only his third. 43 to 40, your score. Pitewell has come back from uh, probably what? What did Shelby Valley have them they down? Had them down eight, eight, they nine? had them down eight. They had them down eight at the half. So they've come back from an eight-point deficit and pulled out by three. I'll get it out here in a minute, Kent. Yeah, it'll come out, Bill. <laughs> you keep pushing. Ball goes back out of bounds to Pikeville. But as fast as we're rocking and rolling up here tonight, hey, they'll have to excuse me if I, I miss a uh, place of word or two here and there. Well, it's going too fast, really, Bill. Here comes Pipe with it. That's Kevin Lockhart. He'll be bringing it in there to Matt Aggins. 2.46 left to go in the third quarter play. 43 to 40 in favor of Pikeville. They give it in there to big Murray Garvin spins. They say last touch by Murray Garvin. It, does it just rolled off his knee that time, Kent? He doesn't think so, but it, it, it did. Here comes Berger with it for Shelby Valley. Nathan Berger into the lineup now. The 6-2 sophomore put up by Blocked. Roberts. Blocked by Pikeville. They give it out to Murray Garvin. They've got the numbers. Let's see. Good fast break by Pikeville. And Pikeville's looking good right now. 45 to 40. As they're feeling it right now, Ken and Coach uh, Bobby Osborne wants to talk about it. So with that in mind, we're going to take a break for these commercial messages and bring back the boys 59th District Tournament Championship game. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird. We never get hacked. Nope. No, we don't. Any home can be improved with better Wi-Fi. 
That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Wi-Fi, a reliable signal throughout your home, enhanced by mobile app features. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to learn more. Guys, I tell you what, this is a great game. What do you guys think about the game? A good one. Yeah, a good one. Very good. Guys, it's close. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks, yeah. thanks a lot, Iver. That'll be number 12, Nathan Berger, bringing the ball inbound for his Shelby Valley Wildcats. Berger, working out the, around the top of that perimeter, finds Rodney Kaiser. Kaiser, guarded closely in there by Kevin Lockhart of Pikeville, out to Roberts. Roberts, right baseline. Gives back to Nathan Berger. Nathan Berger thought about it. Now gives out there to Roberts. Roberts into Edmonds. Edmonds finds the ice man by the keys, lays up and in. 45 to 42. Here comes Matt Aggins out to Kevin Lockhart. Lockhart back to Garvin. Garvin top of the key. Looking. Whoa. And they got him for steps. Yes, sir. As he shuffled his feet. As Murray Garvin now needs to settle down right now, though, Kent. He does. He's in the catbird seat. He's just got to go with the flow. Don't let it get to you, Murray. If it gets out of control, the official will stick him with that tee. Because they demonstrated they'll do it. 148 left to go in the third quarter play. Here's Rodney Kaiser, 45 to 42, or a score in favor of Pikeville Panthers. Out to uh, Nathan Berger. Finds Roberts. Roberts back to Berger. Berger around the top of that perimeter. They try to get it underneath. But Shelby Valley retains it. Here comes uh, Rodney Kaiser. Berger put that dribble down back to Roberts. We're just working around right now, trying to get a good shot here with 125 left to go in the third quarter play. Edmonds. They're trying but, to find keys, uh, Bill. But uh, Murray Garvin's all over him in there. He's he's confronting him in there. He's, he's fronting him, and if he could get him on his hip and roll off the back of him, they tried that earlier uh, in the first half, and it didn't work. There's Nathan Berger for three. Got up, one go. Berger hit the deck. No call. So here comes uh, Pikeville Panthers. Keith Lockhart, out to Kevin Lockhart, his brother. Here comes Murray Garvin. Garvin from 15, right or down. 47-42, so Pikeville pulls out by five. Bobby Keys seconds. is going to, I'm sorry, Bill. Bobby Keys is going to have to get in Murray Garvin's face when he's out there. He's not doing it. Because he can hit that shot, Kent. Like I said in the first half, he can go inside, outside on you. Here's Nathan Berger. Berger, stop from 10, left baseline, good. 47-44. So right now it's anybody's game. Matt Aggins. Aggins. Coach Hard walling up, calling the play. I believe he wants one shot. Murray Garvin. Garvin. Thought about it now. Pulls the trigger from three. No good. Up high to claim the rebound is Nathan Berger. They strip away by Lockhart, but Berger gets it back. They find De Dave Edmonds. Oh. And, uh, let's see. Might have been over. That should have been over and back. Nathan Berger shot up. Foul, that foul. should have been, Bill, that should have been over and back. Now we'll go against Keith Lockhart as uh, might have missed one there, Kent. Six seconds left to go in the third quarter. But uh, I'll tell you what, as much room as they are on that court, uh, they can't see everything. Though, That's all true. The time. <laughs> and then this this crew is impressive. Uh, both these officials are impressive. We talk a lot about Ansi, but let's say that the other ref is doing a great job and has both games we've seen him call. Sure has. 47 to 44, so uh, Nathan Berger will be at the uh, free throw line trying to cut into that uh, lead right now. For Shelby Valley with six seconds left. First foul shot up, won't go. Shelby Valley's got to hit them when they get them, Bill. And we've got the 6'4 uh, freshman getting ready to check back in, Kent. Matthew Baker, 47 to 44 score. Must be coming in for Berger. So Nathan Berger at the charity strike, highs the basket. Shot underway, no good again, missed them both. Let's see, scrap for the rebound. Dave Evans, he almost saves it, but it'll go back over to Pikeville, so Pikeville will have uh, four seconds to get it down the court. That's time enough to get a shot off with long three. Let's see what they do with it. 47 to 44 in favor of Pikeville. Ball comes inbounds to the Lockhart. Lockhart, long pass to Garvin. Put up at the basket, good and a foul. So they go the length of the court, they score, and he's fouled, Kent. I believe it'll go against, uh, was that Edmonds? Edmonds. As he put the shot up uh, with uh, about a half a second left, it went through and he was fouled. So um, they take it the length of the court. They posted Murray Garvin up underneath. Shelby Valley didn't see him. They didn't get back. I really don't know about that call, though, um, uh, at, at this time, Bill, because it looks to me like uh, Edmonds was set. As Murray Garvin goes to the free throw line, shot up good. 50 to 44 in favor of Pikeville Panthers.
So we're going to take a break for these commercial messages and bring back the uh, fourth and final quarter of play. This is TV5 Sports. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearhart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearhart Broadband for a great offer today. Sharing a big family moment, working hard from home, relaxing with a friend. Welcome to life in the broadband age, where reliable internet has never been more important. Gearheart Broadband keeps your family connected with consistent speeds up to one gig and plume adaptive Wi-Fi. Make sure your home's ready for life in the broadband age. Call our local service team or visit Gearheart Broadband online to learn more. Any home can be improved with better Wi-Fi. That's why Gearheart Broadband offers Plume Wi-Fi, a reliable signal throughout your home, enhanced by mobile app features. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to learn more. Right now, it's uh, Pikeville out on top of Shelby Valley, 50 to 44, and we've got eight more minutes left to play to determine the champions of the boys' 59th district tournament coming to you from the Vir Virgie Athletic Center. And I'm sure both teams would like to have that trophy, Kent, going into the 15th region next week. You know they would, Bill. You want to go in as the champion, it puts you in the winner's bracket. Of course, uh, TV5 Sports and WPRG will carry the 15th region. We'll bring it to you from Allen Central. Here comes Tyrone Mullins. Mullins starts to drive, but uh, they say he stepped on the out-of-bounds line. He'll go back over to Shelby Valley. And uh, Chad Justice with four fouls is back in the game. Here comes Rodney Kaiser. As is Jeremy Johnson. He's guarded in there by Kevin Lockhart. And Kevin Lockhart playing good defense right now, as all these Pikeville Panthers are. Into Jeremy Johnson, so he's playing with four fouls. But Coach Bobby Osborne's decided, I guess, it's crush time. And he's got to have Got to have him. Here comes uh, Pikeville. Offensive charge on Tyrone Mullins of Pikeville. As this crowd is rocking and a rolling, wheeling and a dealing at the Virgie Athletic Center. Six Here point lead for the Panthers right now. Here comes Rodney Kaiser. Holds up that fist and calls the play. Out to Justice. Justice guarded in there by Murray Garvin right now. Into Rodney Kaiser over to Roberts. They get it in there to uh, the money man, Jeremy Johnson. He loses it. It'll go back out of bounds to Pikeville. 7-18 left to go in the championship game. Here comes Tyrone Mullins with it for Pikeville. Coached by Howard Wallen. Here comes Kevin Lockhart. Lockhart out to Jeremy Johnson. He's, Jeremy Johnson's guarding him in there. Now they give him room out there. Jeremy Johnson right now can't, play to, to, can't afford to play too aggressive defense. Can't play him with four personals. Here comes Murray Garvin stopped from 15. Right or down. Murray Garvin having a good game. May be the MVP of this tournament. Pikeville goes on to win it. Let's see a whistle and a foul. Foul's going to be on Garvin, and I'll tell you what, J.J. got lucky there. He was out of control. Sure was. 52 to 44 score. 6.50 left to go in the championship game. I'm Bill Bevins for the play-by-play, -play, joined by Kent Carter for the color commentary for TV5 Sports. Allison, J.J., Jeremy Johnson to the free throw line. As they uh, want to wipe up some perspiration out there. Some, just some good old sweat, Kent. Sweat. I, and I'm sure them boys has uh, done a lot of that tonight out there the way they play. Need Hope. to get that floor uh, dressed up, though, because that's dangerous. Sure is. You get hurt real quick. The Shelby Valley Band. Jeremy Johnson piles the basket, puts the first free throw up. No good, in and out. So uh, the free throw uh, shooting definitely hurting Shelby Valley right now. 6.50 left to go in the game, 52 to 44. Johnson's second free throw, no good again. 
Rebounded by J.P. Blair of Pikeville. Free throws are key in a game like this. Here comes Kevin Lockhart. Lockhart looks inside. Shelby Valley in a man-to-man -man right now. Stripped away by Roberts of Shelby Valley. Goes in for the layup. Good. 52 to 46 as Shelby Valley pulls it to within six with 628 left to go on the score clock. Kevin Lockhart, left baseline guard in now by Jeremy Johnson out to Tyrone Mullins. He's confronted by uh, Kaiser, puts the shot up, good. And those shots are falling for Pikeville now. They weren't early in the third quarter, Kip, but right now they're getting a few of them to foul. They sure are. Here comes Jeremy Johnson, dishes in there to big Bobby Keys. Shot up, a whistle and a foul on Keith Lockhart. That's his fourth. I don't believe Keith necessarily agrees with it. Doesn't matter, they're gonna stick him with it. 54 to 46 to score. We've got a couple of substitutions in for Coach Harold Wallen. That's uh, Todd Smith and Matt Agnes checking back into the lineup. Six oh five left to go in the game with Bobby Keys at the uh, free throw line. 54 46 in favor of Pavel. Keys first foul shot, no good. And man, I'll tell you what, they can't buy one. They have got to start connecting on these free throws. They're really not even in the bonus yet. Bobby Keys puts that dribble down. Shot up. No good again. So they've missed the last five or six there I know of. Here's Matt Aggins out to Todd Smith. Right baseline. Makes a good move on Jamie Roberts. Gets open. Little old jumper up. Won't go. But uh, Tyrone Mullins claims it for Pikeville. They'll have another chance at it. Here's J.P. Blair. He backs it out there now to Matt Aggins. Doing the ball handling for the Panthers. Aggins dives. Let's see they get him for the offensive charge as uh, Jamie Roberts stood his ground that time. So we've got a charging foul on uh, Matt Aggins of Pikeville as Chad Justice will bring it in for the Wildcats of Shelby Valley. And uh, 33, Matthew Baker's in for Bobby Keys. Chad Justice. And Pikeville still, still sticking right with him in that full court pressure man-to-man -man defense, Ken. And that has to work on you all night long, you know. Yeah, really. Chad Justice. Jeremy Johnson for three, shot up, in and out. Rebounded by Pikeville. Shelby Valley can't buy a basket right now. They are cold as ice right now. Here comes J.P. Blair. Blair almost stripped away by Jeremy Johnson of Shelby Valley. Now Murray Garvin pulls the trigger from three, bullseye. 57 to 46, so Pikeville pulling out to a 11 point lead here with a little over five minutes left I, to go. I honestly do not understand why neither Baker nor Keyes contest Garvin's shot. They really don't contest his shot. And Shelby Valley in trouble right now, Kent. They need to get something started here early. We've got five minutes and nine seconds left to go in the game. They need to get something started right here because they're down by 11. 57 to 46. Here comes J uh, Rodney Kaiser out to Jeremy Johnson, top of the key. Finds uh, big Matthew Baker, put the left-handed hook shot up, won't go, but a whistle and foul. And let's see who they stick with it. Did you catch who that foul No, was I didn't catch that at all. I uh, um, J.P. Blair. So that makes his uh, fourth. fourth personal foul. We we've got it, so J.P. Blair in foul trouble. And he's played a good game up here tonight. He really has. Here comes uh, the freshman, Matthew Baker, free throw line. Shot up, won't go. And Shelby Valley, cold as a cucumber from the free throw line. And that's a cucumber that's been in the uh, refrigerator a while too, folks. <laughs> Matthew Baker, second free throw up, good this time. So he breaks the ice at the charity strike. Here comes Tyrone Mullins for Pikeville, out to Todd Smith, right baseline. He's open for that 15-foot jumper, just didn't want it. Here's Tyrone Mullins. Tries to get it in there and stripped away by Jeremy Johnson. Out to uh, Rodney Kaiser, up to Matthew Baker. Matthew Baker pulls up from 10, won't go, but rebounded by Bobby Keys, put back up and in. 57 to 49, they cut the lead to the eight. With 429 left to go. Tyrone Mullins, out to Murray Garvin. Garvin, top of the key. Makes a nice drive in there, but they got a whistle and a foul on big Matthew Baker. But That's all right. Matthew He's going to score if you don't him. do that, isn't he, Bill? Exactly right. Baker's got to stick with him. 
And Baker in no foul trouble, so uh, they know, didn't do it. I mean, what the heck? Go ahead and put them at the free throw line. <laughs> if you don't, they're going to score underneath on Young Paint, under the paint there. 57 to 49, 422 left to go in the game with Highville out on top. Murray Garvin, free throw line. Got up, won't go, so Powell's having their problems at the charity strike, too. Garvin, how's the basket? Second free throw up good this time. 58-49 in favor of Pikeville. That'll be Matthew Baker bringing the ball inbounds. Some screens are set out there, but he still has trouble getting the inbound. Now find Jeremy Johnson over to Jamie Roberts. Roberts, left baseline cut off in there by two Pikeville defenders. Let's see. We've got a tie-up possession arrow. We'll give it back to Shelby Valley. And they got lucky because <laughs> what happened there is that uh, Jamie just drove away from the ball. Exactly. That'll be Rodney Kaiser bringing the ball inbound for his Shelby Valley Wildcats. Gives in there to Jeremy Johnson on a set play. They just uh, set a screen for him and broke down the right baseline. Kent was wide open, uncontested. That's a set play. Here comes uh, Matt Aggins. Aggins works out there to Big Murray Garvin. We've got an offensive try. Of That's Jer it. Jeremy That's Johnson's it. out of here. As Jeremy Johnson having a few words to talk to one of the Pikeville players, but Jeremy Johnson has just fouled out with 4.02 left to go, so we'll mark that down. 58 to 51 to score. And I believe uh, Chad Justice and Kent Trivet getting back. Getting ready to check back into uh, Coach Bobby Osborne's Shelby Valley Wildcat lineup. So Jeremy Johnson's the first player uh, to foul out of the championship game up here at the Virgie Athletic Center. And they'll miss his services, Kent. That'll be uh, Mullins to the charity strike for running the bonus. Shot up and man, it's noisy in there. No good. Yeah, they're in the bonus, that's right. Well, they no, get they're, no, they're saying you must have been shooting then. Must have, because uh, I thought it was one in the no, bonus. No, 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 bad call. He was not shooting. May have been a lane violation, I didn't see it. Shot up good, second free throw good. So lane good. violation, Bill. You're right. Good call, buddy. 59-51, uh -huh. man, what a game. So uh, we've got timeout on the court, and with that in mind, we're going to take a break for these fine commercial messages. This is TV5 Sports. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. <laughs> Right. It had to be a lane violation, Kent. Really, because this is his third shot. Smith put the shot up. Good. 60 to 51. I will out by nine with 401 left to go in the game. And if you're uh, tuning in to us late, it was Shelby Valley defeating uh, the Pikeville girls to claim the championship of the girls. 59th district. Here's Jamie Roberts. Shot up. This one a foul in Murray Garvin. And I'll have to be quite honest, Kent. I'm not so sure about that call. It looked like a clean block from our advantage. It, it looked clean from here. It really did. I got to say, I agree with you on that. But again, uh, we're a long way from down there at the end of the court. So uh, it'll send Jamie Roberts to the uh, free throw line. 
That's three on Murray Garvin. Randy Roberts. First free throw won't go. And uh, I can't believe this. Shelby Valley, I don't know what the percentages are, but man, it has to be way, way down there from that charity's track. It's Roberts. about as bad as Andre Riddick's. And the uh, second free throw wouldn't go for him. I'm sure Coach Bobby Osborne will be working his boys on that uh, free throw shooting. Here's Kevin Lockhart out to Murray Garvin. Garvin, if they give him any room, he'll pull the trigger from three out there. Here's Matt Aggins out to Todd Smith. Back to Lockhart. Lockhart, right side. Back to uh, Murray Garvin. Garvin makes a good fake. Good pass in there. Might have been an offensive foul on uh, Garvin that time. Let's see, it goes back to Piper. I thought the, they might have got the Murray Garvin with the offensive charge that time underneath they, the... Uh, they didn't call it. He did it. 60 to 51 in favor of Pikeville. <laughs> 325 left to go in the championship game of the boys' 59th district tournament. And almost a five-second call, but Kevin Lockhart puts the shot up. No go. May have been some contact. Here comes Rodney Kaiser. Over there to Chad Justice. Justice barely does save it for the Wildcats. And uh, deflected out of bounds by Murray Garvin. So good defense by Pikeville. 60 and, uh, to 51. Uh, good play there by uh, Chad because uh, everybody thought that uh, Rodney was going up for the shot. Ball comes in and bounds to Jamie Roberts for Shelby Valley. Roberts back out there to Rodney Kaiser. He throws it out of bounds, so turnover. And right now it's getting down crunch time and uh, Shelby Valley can't afford many of those, 60-51. They've got to make every possession count right now for Shelby Valley. Here's Kevin Lockhart. He'll be bringing the ball in bounds. Gets in now to uh, Matt Aggins. They've got the three-point shooter in. They're going to try to put him up, Bill. Aggins to J.P. Blair, who's been quiet for a little while, but he had a, a good third quarter and we done it by Bobby Keys as J.P. Blair just couldn't connect on it. Here comes uh, Rodney Kaiser. Kaiser, back over there, and they throw what it What is again. going on? <laughs> so uh, they've committed, what, two turnovers here in a row. It'll be long to the Pikeville Panthers. That'll be Matt Aggins bringing the ball inbounds for his Panthers. Right in front of the Shelby Valley bench. Gets it in there to Smith. Smith. Guarded in there by Chad Justice, who's playing, I believe Chad Justice is playing with four personals. Good passing by uh, Pikeville as Matt Aggin just putting uh, a little bit out of control there under the basket. Here's Kent Trivet with it now doing the ball handling. Out to Matthew Baker, pulls the trigger from 15. Pretty shot for Matthew Baker. And uh, quickly, Shelby Valley gets time out. So uh, we're going to take a break for these commercial messages. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. Gearheart Broadband gets solutions for your small business right. Fiber connects you to the cloud with speeds up to one gig with digital voice, the right video solutions, and local support. Make the right call. Gearheart Broadband. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. Let's go ahead and bring it back, Don. 
223 left to go in the championship game with Pottwell out on top, 60 to 53. It'll be Pottwell's ball out of bounds and uh, Shelby Valley will be picking them up full court. Here comes Smith. Smith runs the baseline, gets it in there to Lockhart. Lockhart finds Matt Aggins almost over his head. Matt Aggins pulls up, tries to get it to Garvin, deflected out of bounds by Big Matthew Baker. It'll go back over to Pikeville. 217 left to go. Matt Aggins brings the ball inbounds underneath his own basket. Pikeville out to Smith. Smith right baseline guarded in there by Chad Justice. Puts a shot up underneath the basket. Won't go, but a whistle on the foul on Matthew Baker, the 6'4 freshman. That'll send Todd Smith to the uh, free throw line for two shots for Pikeville. We've got uh, J.P. Blair back in there along with uh, Tyrone M Mullins now. As Todd Smith, number 23, goes to the charity strikes. First foul shot, won't go. He'll be in there for one more. And both teams right now can't, uh, both teams uh, shooting very, very poorly from that charity strike. Todd Smith. Second free throw. Good this time. One out of two. Here comes Matthew Baker. Gets it in there to Kent Trivet. And if they could set him a few screens in there, Kent, maybe let him uh, get open for a three-pointer or two, but I don't believe Pop was going to let that happen as he just takes it coast to coast to whistle on the foul. Did good get, play. Murray Garvin. A good, good, smart play. So it was. They just uh, cleared out and let him drive the lane that time. Foul was on uh, uh, Tyrone Murray. Mullins. Tyrone Mullins. Tyrone Mullins. Okay, so, so that'll send Kent Trivet to the uh, charity strike. 2.04 left to go in the championship game. So let's see what Mr. Trivet can do from the uh, free throw line. First one up, good. He sinks it. 61 54. Pulls him to within seven. Trivet will be at the charity strike for one more. Puts it up. Good again. J.P. Blair gets it in there to Mullins to Pikeville. Blair, Blair runs across the timeline, a little 360 spin move, now behind the back to Urban. So some good ball handling by uh, Blair, who lays it over to Garvin. What a play by Pikeville Panthers that time, and it was all set up by the uh, ball handling of J.P. Blair, Kent. He could play point, and he's playing the center. So here's Rodney Kaiser with it for Shelby Valley. One minute and 39 seconds, 63 to 55. And right now, Shelby Valley in trouble. They give it in to Bobby Keys. Bobby Keys spins from 10, shot up, rolls in. And let's see, a whistle and a foul. I believe it goes to against Todd Smith out the basket. So they got the shooter's bounce on that. 63, 55 for the score. <laughs> it's hard to read the clock. If they had already put the points on the score board, I don't. 133. I don't believe they put the points on the scoreboard. No, they didn't. They haven't. They're telling them basket count. There they go. All right. That's what confused me. Messed me up. I, I knew they were down by eight while ago. Just a little bit slow about putting the points on the scoreboard. Bobby Keys shot up. Good. Pulls him to within five with a minute and 33 seconds. Left to go. Here comes Todd Smith. Smith back to J.P. Blair. This is a boys' championship action. J.P. Blair might have been a foul. No call. J.P. Blair gets it over to Todd Smith, so they're taking some time off. Todd Smith up and in. As it's crunch time, and he made it count. Here comes Shelby Valley. They're down by seven with a minute and 12 seconds left to go in the championship game. They go into Bobby Keys. Gets it in there to uh, Justice. Justice puts the shot up good. And uh, Bobby Osborne wants to time out. Couldn't get it that time. Uh, uh, they give it over to uh, Lockhart. Lockhart. That's it for Chad Justice. He's out of here. A whistle and a foul. As, uh, so Chad Justice has just fouled out. As uh, the ball player hits some girls down here on the uh, out of bounds line, I hope none of them's hurt. Those two or three of them hit the deck that time, Kent. They're sitting so close to the court, that's going to happen. And that shows you how packed it is in here. As if uh, officials tells them to move back a little bit. 
That'll be Kevin Lockhart for one in the bonus. 65 to 60 in favor of Pikeville with 56 seconds left to go. Shot up. Oh, oh man, boy. 66 to 60 in favor of Pikeville. So right now, Ken, if he puts this one in, they're in good shape. With this little bit of time left, I think you can say it's over if he makes this one. Lockhart eyes the basket, puts a shot up, good again. 67 to 60 in favor of Pikeville. Here comes Kent Trivet. Shelby Valley in definite trouble right now behind the back dribble. They need to get a shot up in a hurry as he throws it out of bounds. So a crucial turnover by Shelby Valley. 67 to 60, 49 seconds left to go. Here comes Pipe One. Shelby Valley's got a foul. Got a foul. Fouling. Fouling. You got a fouling. So a uh, quick foul by Kent Trivet is uh, if you're Shelby Valley, you have to foul and not let Pikeville uh, take too much uh, time on the uh, score clock. Of course, if you're Pikeville, you want to protect that ball right now, Kent. Absolutely. 43 seconds left to go in a championship game. 67 to 60. And that'll be Lockhart, who played a good game up here. First free throw. Won't go. So uh, it'll belong to Shelby Valley. They need to get a three-pointer up here quick or something. Here's Jamie Roberts for three. Shot up, in and out. Scrap for the rebound. Here comes Pipewell with it. And they get it to Lockhart. Lockhart tries to save it, but gets it in out of Kaiser. Out to Trivet. Trivet pulls the trigger from three. Might have been blocked. Rebounded by Bobby Keyes. Put back up and in. So we've got timeout on the uh, court with a score, 67 to 62, and we're just going to keep it right here. We're rocking and rolling at the Virgie Athletic Center in Kent. We've had a good one up here to call. This has been one of the best games I've seen all year, and uh, what a way to end the, uh, the, the 59th district, but with a game like this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and say it now that the difference in this game is the failure to go out and confront Murray Garvin on his long range shots. To assume that he's gonna miss it and you'll block him off the rebound assumes way too much of a player of the caliber uh, of Murray Garvin. If uh, you're at Shelby Valley, you're exactly right. For Shelby Valley, if he connects on one or two of those, man, you gotta go pick him up. 21 seconds left to go in the game. 67 to 62 in favor of Pikeville. And it'll be Pikeville ball. As you're listening to the Shelby Valley Band, directed up here by Mr. Lee Burke, I believe. Yes, sir. Here comes Pikeville with it. Let's see, 21 seconds. Out to Garvin. Garvin fouled by Bobby Keys, and now that's the only option they've got. So uh, we're going to shoot, be shooting free throws, looks like, from here on out. We would like to remind our listeners that WPRG and TV5 Sports will be carrying the 15th Regional 2 from uh, Allen Central. And we're carrying the 58th, 59th, and 60th District tonight. Here's Murray Garvin. That ought to be a dandy over there at Elkhorn and Belfry over at John Street tonight. Here's uh, Murray Garvin. Shot up good. So uh, that just about, I'd say that just about wraps it up, Kent. If that seals it. It's six points now with only 18 seconds. Garvin. Nine points now. Connects on the second one. So here comes Jamie Roberts with it. Roberts. Right side, little 15 foot jumper, too hard. Rebounded by Big Murray Garvin. Needed a three pointer anyway. May be the most valuable player up here in this tournament. No doubt about it. 69 to 62. Murray Garvin's my MVP. 10 seconds left to go. In the championship game, and it's going to be the Pikeville Panthers claiming the 59th district tournament championship trophy and what a pretty trophy it is i do want to reiterate that the difference in this game murray garvin connects on the free throw go ahead Kim. is murray garvin's outside not his inside game tonight he's a good shooter out there the boy's got a whole lot of athletical talent second one up no good here comes Shelby Valley, seven seconds left to go. Kent Trivet for a long three, shot up, no desperation shot, 70 to 62. And that'll be our final score. So Pikeville Panthers, coached by Herb Wallen, are winners of the 59th District Tournament. And we brought it to you for TV5 Sports and WPRG at the Virgie Athletic Center. And we're glad we could bring it to you.
again, the final score, 70 to 62. High Gulf Panthers, winners of the boys, 59th district tournament. And if you're late uh, tuning in to us earlier tonight, it was the Shelby Valley Lady Cats defeating the uh, High Gulf Lady Panthers to win the girls championship up here by a final score. Uh, and that one was 81 to 50. Well, right now, we're just gonna pan around uh, a little bit on the uh, floor as uh, players out congratulating each other, uh, the fans. Uh, we're be getting ready and uh, cutting down the uh, nets here momentarily. And we've had a fine tournament up here, Kent. We sure have. This has been wonderful. So with that in mind, let's take a real quick break for these uh, commercial messages, and we'll bring it right back to you for the post-game wrap-up and ceremonies. This is TV5 Sports. Smart devices make our lives better, but they're also susceptible to hackers. That's why Plume helps identify when a device is acting strange. You mean like talking to itself for no reason? I'm talking to the audience. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearhart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe this. What's going on? The neighbors got hacked again. Weird. We never get hacked. Nope. No, we don't. in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system.